uh, Waldron's transplant globulinemia is a rare form of lymphoma uh, that involves the bone marrow and is unique by uh, producing monoclonal immunoglobulin, the so-called IgM, uh, which leads to uh, particular complications of this disease not seen in other lymphomas. Uh, this includes uh, neuropathy, uh, what is called hyperviscosity syndrome, uh, which has multiple manifestations, ocular, pulmonary, uh, neurologic, that requires uh, plasmapheresis or uh, blood exchange to remove the, the toxic immunoglobulin. And the, the diagnosis of this disease has somewhat evolved over the past 20 years. Uh, we now try to separate patients who have monoclonal gammopathy or the presence of this monoclonal protein without evidence of lymphoma uh, from those who actually uh, have true Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia with evidence of, uh, of uh, lymphoma in the bone marrow. Um, and the treatments for it uh, have been traditionally involving chemotherapy. Uh, over the past 10-15 uh, years we have learned mostly from small trials that new drugs, particularly rituximab, but also bortezomib and pendamustin, have a very dramatic activity in this disease. Um, they have not been compared yet head-to-head -head in large trials, which are very difficult to conduct. Um, but uh, it is interesting to find out whether the application of these drugs uh, in the community parallels the developments in the, in the clinical trials in academic centers. Um, there were survival trends uh, described in Waldenstrom's macrobulinemia over the past 20 years, both in the States and in the Europe. Some studies were showing significant improvements, others not, uh, but we were not able to determine whether uh, this is related to changes in the diagnostic definition, in the application of treatment, or the actual change in the treatment and, and better treatments. Um, so in our study we were able to uh, look at Medicare claims uh, which determine um, specifically the treatments provided to patients with Waldenstrom's macrobulinemia uh, to subset of these patients, those who have Medicare insurance, but this is the majority of cases uh, because this is a disease of patients in their 60s, 70s and even 80s. Uh, we were able to see uh, the change over the uh, two, past two decades in terms of treatments applied. Uh, the traditional treatments with fludarabine and cyclophosphamide, which predominated in the 1990s when about half of patients were receiving uh, um, purine analogs and uh, a large proportion were also receiving alkylating agents, completely changed since 2000s. Uh, now approximately half of patients receive single agent rituximab. Um, about um, 30 or 40 percent additionally receive uh, rituximab with chemotherapy and over the past four years we see larger application uh, of bendamustin and bortezomib although this is still a small percentage of patients. We did look at a uh, change in the survival related to these treatments and it does appear that there is improvement in survival since 1990s uh, by as much as uh, half uh, with a hazard ratio of 0 0.5 almost. Um, and this is interestingly paralleled with uh, a change in the, di in the presentation of patients who seem to have actually more uh, complications at diagnosis. There is now more anemia, more neuropathy um, um, compared to 1990s. Uh, we think that this is mostly related to the change in, in the diagnostic uh, definition and uh, the, the moment where the patients are labeled as Waldenstrom's uh, macroglobulinemia. So, Considering these apparently unfavorable trends and presentations, we think that the uh, treatments have uh, changed the prognosis. Uh, and it does appear that uh, over the past five years, patients who receive uh, rituximab-based chemotherapy do have longer survival than those who do not. Um, we also looked at uh, costs related to uh, this, these treatments. Uh, and there is definitely uh, this increase in survival is paralleled by significant increase in costs. Uh, when we calculated mean uh, payments for chemotherapy uh, in the 1990s accrued during the first year of treatments, uh, they were about $7,500. Uh, now this escalated to approximately $30,000 uh, in the first year of treatment. And this is primarily driven uh, by uh, application of rituximab. Um, bortezomib and bendamustin, which are currently still used in a smaller uh, proportion of patients, uh, only 5 to 10% uh, each, uh, are also extremely expensive and we can probably see further improvement, uh, in increasing those costs. We will have to find out whether this translates into uh, better survival outcomes for all patients for this disease which is ultimately incurable and is primarily managed uh, to prevent serious complications.